Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be talking about arrays and uh, spacing and parts and how to make things kind of line up into different patterns on your board. This could be used for a lot of different things. It could be used for graphics, it could be used for lettering, and most importantly, it could be used for components and other features you might want to add to your PCB. So let's take a look at what the board we've been looking at here. Um, so we have, uh, first off, let's just grab a generic component here. Nothing special. Let's just grab the C301. There we go. And we're going to duplicate it by hitting Control D. Now, duplicate is kind of a weird one. You wouldn't normally want to do this because now there's two instances of C301. We're just doing this for in this case here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to du duplicate it again and just kind of put these into a weird array here. And let's just uh, let's now grab this whole thing and we'll duplicate that as well. Put a little bit out of. A Alignment. Let's move it a little bit further here. All right. So now we've got all of these components here, and we want to line them up so that they uh, are all in the same horizontal plane. So let's do that. So right, uh, select all of them. Remember, we uh, in the past select videos, if you select from left to right, it's going to just select everything you envelope completely. If you go left, uh, right to left, you don't actually have to get everything completely. So you don't actually have the entire C301 in the upper left corner, but I still get it when I select right to left. All right. So now we're going to go to align distribute, and we're going to go align to top. All right, now they're all in the same uh, in the same horizontal plane here. I'm going to move. I'm going to grab the f the rightmost one, and I'm going to move it a little bit further out. And the reason I'm going to do this now, uh, and this is probably the the most useful thing you might want to use here, is if you select all of them and then you say right click, align distribute. We're going to say distribute horizontally. And now these are perfectly spaced without having to do the math. And that's really, really useful. This is something that I find myself doing quite often when I'm creating arrays. And the other reason that this is nice is that if you're importing, so say this is, this is C301 and this is actually C10, C310, this is a much more likely version where you're, you want to put a, an array of components across your board and you want to have them evenly spaced. Now let's see what happens if these should all still be in order. And the order actually does matter. So I'm, I'm going to you know, put a little caveat on that. But uh, it, I'm going to grab all these components. I'm going to right click, align distribute, and now I'm going to say distribute vertically. And what I expect to happen is that it'll look like a staircase. If I put any of these out of order, like when I created these one, two, three, four, five, if I created them in a different order because they are all the same component, I think it might not do that, but we'll see here. All right, so align distribute vertically. Yeah, I didn't quite do that. So it just did a little bit more randomly. Uh, I thought it was going to create a stair step thing, but I have not quite, quite cracked the nut on that one uh, yet. So we'll put them all back in line here. Uh, similarly, if we want to right click, we can uh, say, say we had a, a bunch of these here. So now we have you know, a group here, a group here, and a group here. And we want to say, OK, well, now all these components, we want them to be aligned in the middle. So let's do uh, align distribute, align to center, uh, sorry to middle. So now they're all on the same uh, vertical plane. Oh, I didn't select that one, it looks like. Um, so center is going to be in the vertical plane. And then uh, middle, or sorry, middle is the vertical plane. Center is the horizontal plane. So, and you can kind of see it in the, uh, in the, in the different uh, uh, little graphics they have here. These are actually useful to show w what, they, uh, what they're actually doing here. So that's useful here. Now, uh, I'm going to switch over from using components here. I'm just going to delete all these guys. Uh, and I'm going to switch to vias. Right? This is a much more likely thing. And this is something we've talked about in uh, KiCad 4.0. When This is actually the method we showed in KiCad 4.0. So it's slightly the same. It's pretty much the same here. What I'm going to do is just create a via. The thing that's, that's different in KiCad 5.0 is that the via is a button instead of having to be a footprint that we insert ourselves. So I'm just going to create a via off the board here. Then I'm going to right click it. And then I'm going to say create an array. And this is something you might want to do if you have, uh, if you're doing via stitching and you want to do a whole bunch of them. So this is just the default. Sorry, this is just be one. So this is the default uh, via stitching here, right? So if we say we want to have, uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's go two millimeters by two millimeters. We want to have, let's say we want to do 100 total vias. Oops, 10 by 10. And we create it here. And now we have an array of uh, 10 by 10 vias, and that would really stitch together two ground planes very nicely. Now, if we want to do uh, slightly, if we want to make sure that it doesn't, uh, that it kind of staggers a little bit, what we can do is undo this. We're going to go back into Create Array, or Control T, I suppose we could do as well. And now we can change the stagger a little bit as well. So if we did three, now you see that it basically goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Same thing, we can keep going. And let's try Control T here. 
and we could do up to, I believe up to 10 because there's actually 10. So what it'll do is actually space them out. And so it creates these different patterns here, which can be kind of nice for, um, you know, having, making sure you're not all in one line. Sometimes you do want to have them all in one line. Uh, but in this case, basically, uh, you know, I think the, the most common one would be a stagger of two, and then it would be kind of one, 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 one. Yeah, so one, one here, one here, one here, one here. And they're, they're kind of spaced out evenly then. Um, and so there's really a lot of things you could use this for. Um, you could, like I said, via stitching is a good one, but even things like graphics, right? You can go and you could draw a graphic here. And if you really wanted to, you can also create an array with this. So control T, let's make the grid a little bit bigger here. Let's go back to five by five and we'll make a whole bunch of bubbles, I guess. Uh, and so this is another thing you might want to do. I mean, like, again, this is just an example. Not sure it's the best example, but, uh, but it's something you can do to 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 have regularly spaced items all over your board. What it comes to, you know what it comes down to using it. I'm probably going to use it most for via stitching and things like that. But you might have other other uses for it here as well. I will I will reiterate. Most of the time, you're not going to be using the same component, and that's the important thing to know. So if you're confused about that, uh, definitely do recommend you go over to the Contextual Electronics forum. Why why wouldn't you want to use the same C301 as the one we were showing? Uh, that's that's a pretty key thing and something that we can talk about over in the Contextual Electronics Forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. Um, and that's just because you want to have a unique ID for every component. We talk about that and lots of other electronics concepts, specifically around PCB making, and uh, that's probably a good place to do it. If you have questions about the feature and how to, you know, if you want a new kind of feature included, or if you want to extend it with, with things like Python scripting, that's a great question for over on the KiCad forum. That's forum.kiCad.info. And as always, we appreciate if you subscribe and click the little bell thingy. Apparently, that's a thing on YouTube now. Uh, we've been coming out with lots of videos about KiCad 5.0. We'll keep coming out with videos as KiCad 5.1 comes out. And uh, generally, just making electronics is our, is our interest around here. That's all for now. If you have any other questions, go over to the forums and look forward to talking in future videos.